ancient world people, and welcome back to Peace of the Week, Episode 2. Today we're going to be looking at the largest surviving gold statue from ancient Egypt. Solid gold statue. Although this is only a replica of the masterpiece that exists today in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. It is a very fine replica and shows all of the detail of the original work. It comes from the 22nd dynasty, which was a time of political upheaval, a reduction of territories, certainly tributes flowing into Egypt were drying up, no longer number one in the ancient lands. But the decline in, in political stability did not affect the arts. The arts flourished and a rather inward looking Egypt produced some very fine work indeed, particularly in gold work and bronze and the anthropoid coffins, the iconic mummy coffins that are the stable feature of any good Egyptian museum. They were also reaching a zenith in workmanship. The examples in the Netherlands Museum, which I got to see up close and personal, they are exquisite. They inspired some of my work back in the early 2000s. Now, the statue itself features the god Amun, the hidden one, the all-powerful conquering god of the New Kingdom. Originally first known in the Middle Kingdom, he was more of a southern god who fused with the northern god Ra to become Amun-Ra, an all-powerful unifying deity for both lands, the north and south Egypt, which had a fault line of rivalry right from the very foundation of ancient Egypt. But this was another way of unifying both territories, population, to keep everyone happy. We had Amun-Ra governing all the lands, the most powerful god in the ancient world through the New Kingdom. But we're back in the third intermediate period now, which came directly after the New Kingdom's peak. So let's have a look at the statue now. It's very, very fine. And there he is. The largest surviving solid gold statue in ancient Egypt. Statues you see from Tutankhamun's tomb that appear solid gold are only gilded, gilded wood. Thick gilding, but nonetheless not solid gold. There's evidence there was a solid gold statue in one of his shrines, but it was stolen. It's always said that his tomb was un unplundered, but of course it was. Uh, it, it did get a little bit of rifling through shortly after it was sealed. Just a cursory collection by the ancient robbers. But definitely there would have been a solid gold statue taken from one of the shrines that would have eclipsed this one. But he is absolutely delicious can almost eat it. Now, at the top here, you can see where there's been a breakage, and that would have been the plumes, the ostrich plumes, stylized ostrich plumes that would have, would have risen, risen uh, uh, that, that high. high.
easily snapped off. And this little tiny dot at the back here suggests it had a loophole there for suspension. So it could have been worn as a massive amulet by a priest. Some have or also suggested that it hung off an actual statue of Amun or worn on a cloak or something from one of the priests. There's quite a number of possibilities. It wasn't the feature statue that would have been moved from shrine to shrine, like the extremely sacred statue that lived in Karnak in the shrine of Amun and annually travelled via boat to the different temples, in particular the Luxor temple, and in a street parade with markets and dancers and people throwing lotus petals and, and incense burning and yeah, very wild, wild time, but nobody could see the, the god himself in his shrine on the boat, carried by priests. You can see the, the carvings of the priests uh, carrying the bark through the towns with the god inside. Now, let's have another look. He's holding a scimitar here. Now this scimitar, well, that's a weapon. And it was offered by the god to the king in times of war for a positive outcome for the land of Egypt. So there was no greater weapon in ancient Egypt. It's not a sword, it's a scimitar. Well, it is actually kind of a sword, a type of sword, nonetheless. I am Amun Ra, and it is time for you to smash that like button and hit the subscribe bell ding a ling -a. He's also holding an ank here, the symbol of life and fertility. doesn't necessarily mean fertility about getting pregnant. It's about the fertility of the land itself, the fertility, the, the strength and the robust nature of, of ripe old Egypt. You know, didn't want to have another seven years of the hyena, you know, times of drought, which is what collapsed the old kingdom and brought us into the first intermediate period in the first place. The, the evidence was there for things to go wrong. So to guard against it, one better have a damn good god. So, yeah, typical flat hat there, similar to the goddess Neith. She has a flat cap like that, and obviously inspired Nefertiti's amazing crown, and that is even more elevated, much, much higher proportions for her. He's wearing a false beard, and if you can have a look at the detail on that, it's just amazing. Proportions are, are very nice indeed, and the back of the statue, the way the limbs move with the fabric, it's great. Look at it. A little thin. Perhaps the gold supply was running a bit low at the time. He is a little little emaciated. Now, there was probably many, many thousands of such statues as mentioned in the ancient records. But of course, this valuable material was sought after by invaders and cannibalistic priesthoods themselves that wanted to melt down objects for their new deities. And here we see a variety of ancient Egyptians in the various stages of gold production. And here we see a group of men manning the blowpipes to reach the highest possible temperature for smelting gold. It's just amazing. There were other manifestations of the god Amun. 
the ram, the sacred ram. And I've got an example of a small votive statue here. Time of Amenhotep III, I think. Exquisite sculpture in this one. there where another crown would have once been would have been the disc of the sun you can imagine that it would have been great so that's the problem with headdresses in ancient Egyptian statues they often snapped off because of the thin join portion which is why a lot of statues have a support pillar at the back because that helps solidify the statue in times of earthquake or, or damage that had come from any calamity such as a raid or civil unrest. You know, these things were not necessarily entirely discarded because there's so much evidence for statues to be repaired. Uh, there's, you see a lot of ancient join marks where maybe a statue had fallen over and and it was from another time and the quality can't be replicated ever the same so they just repaired them the lady with mandrake fruit is one one prime example of that this statue was deemed so detailed and worthy of salvaging they made an indentation to receive a repair piece of stone a tenon if you like to make the statue whole again that's since been lost, but you can see where it would have slotted in. The Hidden One, Amon-Ra. This week's Peace of the Week. I hope you liked him as much as I enjoyed presenting him to you. And tune in next week for some other extraordinary piece of wonder from the land of the pharaohs, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Botswana and desert tribesmen. Who knows what it's going to be? I don't know. I'd love to know, wouldn't you? So that was this week's piece of the week. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you enjoy everything. I hope you love yourself. And I'll see you next time. Ciao for now.